This is the real number system right here. We live in the real number system. It's got fractions and negative fractions. It's got integers. Well, it's got whole numbers. And negative whole numbers. Those that makes up the integers. Of course, it's got zero. Um, it's got square roots. It's got negative square roots. It's got cube roots like we were dealing with. We were just dealing with that and the negative version of that. Um, it's got a whole bunch of numbers. In fact, there are an infinite number of numbers in our real number system, which makes it really, really big. For the longest time, people thought that was all there was. And then along came the Italian mathematicians who said, not so fast, buddy. What happens to all those problems where you end up with a negative number under a square root? What are you going to do with that? Where does that go? And so what they decided was, we'll just say that it's uh, extraneous. OK, um, uh, we can't use it because it's not in the real number system. It's not a real number. It's just imaginary. Which was the original name of the complex number system? The imaginary number system. That was the symbol for it. And so numbers like this, numbers like this, were relegated to non-existence. But they did exist, and it took Gauss to prove that they existed. And so, just to show he had a good sense of humor, he named I as the basic component of the complex number system, which he still called imaginary. The square roots of negative numbers do exist in a much larger system of numbers that includes the real number system, but it's called now the complex number system. Okay, the symbol for the complex number system They were still calling it the imaginary number system when I was a kid. OK, somewhere along the line, somebody said it wasn't respectable enough. We need to switch to complex number system. OK, but that's just trying to be respectable. So a typical complex number looks like this. It's got two parts. This is called the real part. And it comes from the real number system, whereas this part is called the imaginary part. Okay, so it's like moving to Mars and finding out that one Martian person has two heads. You just have to accept it if that's the way they are. 
They'll accept, maybe, they'll accept the fact that you have one head. They probably will consider you a little bit inferior because they got two. <laughs> and thank you. And we are going to be working with complex numbers today and introducing you to complex numbers. For instance, even though I is really the square root of negative one. You never actually write out the square root of negative one. Okay, let's look at the square root of negative 16. We're not gonna leave the number in that condition. Instead, we're gonna say, well, the square root of negative 16 is the square root of negative 1 times positive 16, which is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16. Well, the square root of negative 1 is called i, and the square root of 16 is 4, so we call this number 4i. The square root of negative 16 is 4i. Just like the square root of positive 16 in the real number system is just 4. So when your calculator gives you an error saying not in the real number system, a non-real number, it means it lives out here where the non-real numbers live in the complex number system. Okay, so incidentally, the square root of negative seven, let's work on that. The square root of seven won't break down. So what we're going to have is I times the square root of seven. Or if the instructions say put in complex form or state the answer in complex form. Then you would write I times the square root of seven as zero plus the square root of seven i. i is not under the radical. i is outside. So you have to be very, very careful. Now, there are some things that you have to memorize. Actually, you could prove it to yourself every time, but it would take a lot of, let me save this. It would take a lot of, well, it's not. It would take a lot of time if you had to prove it all to yourself, all at once, you know? It's better to memorize it. So, I is, sounds strange, doesn't it? I is, but I is the square root of negative one. On the other hand, I squared is the square root of negative one squared. Now you know what happens when you square a square root. I squared equals negative one. 
Now the rest that I am going to do is going to be based on these two truths, if you will. I to the third power can be written I squared times I. But we know that I squared equals negative one. So this will be negative one times I, which will be negative I. And I to the fourth power equals I squared times I squared. which is negative one times negative one, which is positive one. So the things you have to memorize here are I equals the square root of negative one, I squared equals negative one, I to the third equals negative I, and I to the fourth equals positive one. And also, I to the zero power equals one. Any number raised to a zero power is one, even in the complex number system. So actually, I guess you should memorize these five. It'll save you time if you go ahead and make a flashcard and memorize these. Now, why? Because of this. You're going to be multiplying complex numbers. Um, 3 plus 2i times 5 minus 7i. Okay, the three, the three will multiply the five, and the three will multiply the negative seven i, and the plus two i will multiply the five, and the plus two i will multiply the negative seven i, so that what you get from this is 15 minus 21 i, plus 10i minus 14i squared. So that will be 15. This will be minus 11i minus 14 times negative 1. So that will be 15 minus 11i plus 14. So that will be 29 minus 11i. What you get when you multiply these two complex numbers together is 29 minus 11i. Amazing, is it? Now also, sometimes you divide. 3 plus 2i divided by 5 minus 7i. And the same thing is true here as when you studied the radical functions. I is a square root. You can't have a root, a radical, in your denominator even when it's disguised as I. So what we have to do is multiply by one in the form of the conjugate of five minus seven i, which is five plus seven i 
over 5 plus 7i. Then you're going to have to multiply the tops together. Ah, uh it's -uh. a plus. Okay, okay, let's do this. Three times five is 15. Three times positive seven I is 21 I. I should say three times plus seven I. Now plus two I times five is plus 10 I. And plus two I times plus seven I is plus 14 I squared over. Now these are conjugates. We have a shortcut for multiplying conjugates. No, 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 no. Five, five squared minus seven I squared. That's only because they're conjugates. Remember you've got A minus B times A plus B. When you multiply conjugates like that, you'll get A squared minus B squared which is how we get that. But these guys up here, they're not conjugates, so we just have to flat out multiply them. This will give us, let's see, we'll have 15 plus 21 plus 10i, 21i plus 10i is 31i, 15 plus 31i, plus 14 times negative one over 25 minus 49 I squared. So that will be, let's pull it on over here so I don't run out of room. I hate it when I have to go over to another page. We will have 15 plus 31i minus 14 over 25 minus 14 times negative one. Well, 15 minus 14, those are both real numbers so I can combine them. 15 minus 14 is one plus 31i over 25 plus 14 and that'll be 1 plus 31i over 39. Barbara, I do have a question. I'm not done yet. Oh, my bad. But I'm almost done. You see, normally I would be done if I didn't have an I number there. But I do. So I've got to put the answer in A plus B I form, which is um, a, a complex form. So I'm going to have to write this as 1 over 39 plus 31 over 39i. 
And if I haven't made an arithmetic error along the way, this is the answer. Talk to me. <laughs> um, I was wondering why the negative 49 didn't go down where the negative 14 is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you wrote. Oh, no. Negative 49. 49. Yes, and there I went. There I went. OK, that's going to be plus 49. Maybe I should have stayed right underneath. OK, now uh, 5 plus 9 is 14. Carry the 1. That'll be 74. So. Now that's the answer. Oh dear, all right, I should have waited. Complex numbers, this is week eight. Complex numbers. Wait, okay, why, now. why did we get the answer that we did? Like instead of leaving one plus 31 I over 74. That would be the easy way. Yes, it would. But because we're in the complex number system, numbers that are complex numbers have to be written in complex form. It's like so, if you go ahead. Sorry. So instead of um, writing 31 I over 74, you leave the I on the outside? Yes, you do. OK, because here's your A number. That's the real number. And this is a real number, but it's the coefficient of an I number. This is A plus B I form. Good question. OK, thank you. You're welcome. 